This video contains an advert for LEGO Art, and this video is sponsored by LEGO Group. Now, LEGO Group have asked me to build a virtual art gallery to display one of their new LEGO art sets. There are several different themes, but I've been asked to do something with the Marvel Avengers Iron Man set. But before I show you what I'm going to do, let's build the set and see what it looks like. And yes, you can make three images, but if you want to build them all at once, you will need to buy three sets. But if you do buy three sets, then you can make one mega image of Iron Man using all three of them at once. So what am I going to do to display Lego art? Well, in an art gallery, normally art's hung on the wall or it's on a pedestal on the floor. So I'm going to make a floor mounted robot that actually drives around on three omnidirectional wheels showing people Lego. And you may have noticed when I built this set that it comes into nine tiles. So I'm going to put nine robot arms on top of my robot so that the tiles can be held by robot arms and they can all be moved around, broken up and brought back together. You'll have noticed my robot has three wheels and these are omnidirectional wheels which have little wheels around the outside that means they can slide sideways as well as rotate normally and that's how we're going to operate on the three wheels. That means we need three wheel mounts and three motors so we've got these 3D prints which are printed with a 1.2mm nozzle so they're really tough and those clamp together to hold the centre core of the robot and they also hold three lots of extrusion to hold three lots of wheel bearings. My bearing blocks are these 20mm internal diameter bearings on pillow blocks that have got holes to screw them on and those are going to be mounted to bits of 2020 extrusion, two for each wheel to hold an axle and that's going to be clamped to these 3D prints. So we've got three of those made up, we've got those pillow blocks attached and those are just bolted to the 2020 and what I've got in here is 20mm bright steel bar which is good for two reasons, firstly it's really tolerance well so it fits in those bearings really well and secondly it's pretty heavy because it's a bar and not a tube and that's good because we want to keep the mass at the bottom. So now what we need to do is attach the wheels to the end of each of these pieces and to do that we're going to use an internally facing ring gear and the reason for that ring gear is so that we can keep the profile nice and small and get the motor right in there close to the drive shaft.
So on one side of the wheel, we've got a spacer that fits those three pegs on the wheel and the wheel's got tapped threads and that means we can bolt on our ring gear here, which will convey force to the wheel. And that spacer stops these wheels rubbing on the ring gear. On the other side, we've got space for this other spacer that's got a clamp on the top and that fits on and allows it to clamp down and stop the wheel falling off the shaft. Now, of course, we've got this ring gear that's actually conveying force on the wheel, so we don't need to worry about actually conveying force with the drive shaft. It's really just an axle. So my wheel is mounted, and hopefully you can see those bolt heads going round and round in there, which are holding this ring gear via the spacer onto the wheel. And that spins really well, and it spins perfectly on centre. That's really important, because the robot's quite tall, so if any of the wheels were off-centre, the whole thing would sway as it drives. For now, that clamp is done up with a zip tie. Eventually, I'll use a hose clip made of metal, but for now, I might need to get the wheel off and I just put some blue tape on the metal shaft there so there's something extra for it to grip and as I say that's just to stop the wheel falling off we're not actually trying to convey any force from this drive shaft now it's time to put the motor in this is a 35 watt DC motor with a planetary gearbox which is a 13.7 to 1 reduction so a pretty standard DC motor we've got a 3d printed gear on there which meshes with this and this is on a block so we can just pop it straight in there that's bolted on. I've actually put little shims underneath here and I've done that on both sides. I actually made this block slightly too short so I could jack this up until the gears mesh perfectly. Bit of a tip for 3D printed gears. And now that seems to run pretty well. So just gonna put some power on that with a battery. Yeah, that seems to run all right. Should have enough power and it seems to be running really well on center. And now we've got three wheel drives. These feel extremely heavy duty due to that steel axle that we've got in the bottom. And of course the mass of the motor and those metal pillow blocks with the bearings in. So I think this is gonna be extremely substantial. But now we've got all three, we can bolt them back onto the piece I showed you at the beginning. So that's the bottom of it. Yes, it's looking pretty substantial altogether now, pretty solid. It's getting a bit big for the table though. So we'll turn it over and put it on the ground. So the floor seems like a better place for this. We have got this acrylic tube stuck in the middle, which is a bit of a teaser. That's coming up later. It will eventually be illuminated and diffused, but for now it fits very neatly in the middle there. So we've got these Omni wheels and owing to the wheels that rotate around the outside, not only can we of course rotate the robot, but we can also move in any direction. And that works fine because these wheels slip. So depending on how we drive the wheels, will be to do all sorts of fancy movements. Before we can build on top of this, there's a few extra bits we need to add. So I've added these three plates, there's one on each leg, and they're not only the battery holder, but they have some additional holes to hold some body cosmetics. We also have motor drivers and power regulators and things to fit in here. But before I do that, we're gonna print the cosmetic panels and see how much space there is. Hundred and sixty-three hours, if anyone wants to know, all with a half mil nozzle and a 0.3 mil layer height. Some of these are for the body, but let's start with the base. I've got a piece that covers each wheel. They've got holes in that go on those plates. So this just fits over the wheel and should screw on from the bottom. So three of those fitted and eventually what we'll have is a nice hub that covers that wheel so we don't see the bracket and everything and everything looks nice and red. Next up are these pieces which fit neatly in here and we can adjust these in and out because it's all on 2020 so they'll slide in and out to make it perfect but that seems to fit pretty well. And as you can see underneath here we've got plenty of space for electronics. So far the electronics looks like a BTS 7960 motor driver that has got a battery connector connected and it's also got another loop of wire that goes off to the next one so all the batteries are connected and they all balance each other. That's currently wired into the battery input and the motor is wired into the motor output. All of those three are linked together until we get to the last one and that one has a five volt regulator on the end which is a 10 amp five volt regulator. So that takes the battery in and gives me five volts on these wires which are gonna power the illuminated core and anything else that needs five volts. It's a really exciting connector and this part's gonna sit in the bottom of the robot and the middle and the 
top of the robot are going to connect to the other half. So on this one, we're going to take five volts and ground up to the middle and the top of the robot a couple of times to power the microcontroller and the illuminated core. And coming back down, we've got six PWM wires that are going to drive those motor drivers. The wiring's got a bit more hectic. I've got a five volt power distribution thing here, which is just a bit of strip board. And we're taking five volts and ground around to those other two motor drivers because each one needs to be powered. Each one's also got the green and white wire, which is the PWM that goes to the connector. So that connector sat neatly in the middle of the robot there, ready to connect to the core. I've loosely balanced in my other panels, so this makes up the base, but now we need to illuminate the core. So I've put my acrylic tube back in there, but what we need is something that runs up the middle with LED strips on so that we can diffuse the outer here and illuminate it. So I'm gonna drop in an insert, which has got a square hole in the middle, and that is attached to a long square section piece of aluminium that we're gonna stick LED strips to. Right, here we go. We've got four LED strips, one on each side of the box, and that seems to illuminate it nicely. These are actually APA 102s driven with an Arduino Pro Mini at the bottom, coloring them all white. Well, that seems to be working, so let's go and assemble everything. I fitted some diffuser material on the inside of that tube and that's looking pretty good. Those LEDs are more than bright enough. There's also a cap on the top that holds that aluminium stick in the middle. And now it's time to put on the three body sections. So these pieces have a hidden feature, which are these fingers all the way around on the inside. And those are going to grip onto that illuminated core with some non-slip material in between. I'm really happy with that so far. I really like the diffused light effect coming through those red body panels. I think that's going to work really well. And don't forget that it's also going to be driving around on its Omni wheels. And next time I'm going to be putting the nine robot arms on top, which are going to hold the Lego art tiles. Thanks again to Lego Group for making this video possible. Don't forget to check out Lego Art and don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you like it and come back next time to see the rest of the build and see it in action. All right, that's all for now.